the Beatles. Welcome back to Utah's Fly Corner. Today I'm going to show you how to tie uh, my soft beetle. It's pretty indestructible. Um, last, and it'll last you a ton of fish. This is it right here. I'm going to show you how to tie it. It's a great, great fish catching pattern. Works great on trout as well as panfish. If you notice how far back the hook bend was, the fly was tied up, I do that so that the fly does not interfere with the bend of the hook. So, we're tying this on a Mustad. 948831. It's a long shank light wire dry fly. I'm going to be using a red Uni 6 aught. Start the thread, bring it back. Now you only want to bring the thread back to the point. Trim your thread, bring it halfway back up. And cut your piece off a piece of foam. You want it kind of wide. A little bit wider than the hook gap will help you. Just doing a little fine tooting on the foam here. Get the big guns out for that. Okay. Now you're only going to need about an inch or so. You need a long, crazy piece of foam. And then what I do is I taper it, cut cut in tapers, cut a slice off of each side. Make sure you're pretty much even. If you're not, just means your body will be a little uneven, your shell. But the fish don't care. Now when I tie this on, I'm going to catch the tip in. But what I'm looking at here in the back is that the taper how far back the taper is. Now, the taper, I want it to stop right right at the heavy part of the bend where it really starts to sweep. So I'm going to tie that in, catch it in, nice tight turn. Then I like to pinch it and just jump turns back to the point and nice tight turns back up. Don't worry about those thread wraps went loose when after your initial your thread wraps from your initial time going up. That's going to uh, get all covered up and tightened anyway. What I, I'm going to use peacock roll. I really like eyes. They have a better hurl to them than strung. That's for sure. Um, if you're close up to the eye here, uh, they're very bushy. So you only need, you only need about three. will do you fine. This is a size 12 that I'm tying. This beetle. It's a size 12 hook. I don't know if I mentioned that. But I'm going to catch in peacock curl. Wrap it back. Back to where you tied in the foam. Now we're going to do a dubbing loop. Just bring your thread down. Now you want to come short. Now I know you can't see what I'm doing, but you want to come short of the, the end of the peacock curl by a good inch. Then wrap it around your thumb. I'm pinching the peacock roll, wrap it around your thumb, and come back up nice and tight, making yourself a loop. Stop your thread there. That's where your body, this piece is going to end. Now I have the peacock curl in between the two pieces of thread, and I'm pinching it down at the bottom. I'm going to use my little shepherd's hook here. I'm going to go underneath the outside thread here and I'm going to reach over top the peacock and grab the outside thread, the thread that's on the left here. I'm going to pull it down and then immediately start the twist. Now the tips are fragile so you can only get so many twists in on those and you got to pinch it, pinch your rope in the middle and then you can put some more twists in, pinch it a little lower, put some more twists in. If you break the peacock roll, it's okay because it'll be locked in with the thread and it's not going to go anywhere. But with that narrow piece of hurl, make yourself a couple turns there to bulk it up. Now I'm just wrapping, stroking those 
long fibers back. And that's about as far as we want to go. Cut this a little shorter. Bring my thread up. Catch it in. Tie him off. Trim him. I'm going to bring my thread up. Make sure you leave about a hook eyes. Now we're covered up for the next part. And for here, we're going to use a saddle hackle feather. Um, excuse me, uh, my feather seems to have disappeared that I had out. Uh, so let me grab another one real quick here. So bear with me. This pattern, uh, like I said, it's a it's a real real great pattern. Uh, it gives a nice plop and the soft tackle on it. it gives a great action on top of the water. You know, with the uh, the stiffer hackle, sure it'll give it a little extra float, um, but it doesn't give it any kind of action. And if there's one thing fish like, that's the action. They eat dead bugs, but those are called spinners. I'm sure they'll eat a drowned beetle as well, but... Okay, put my saddle back real quick. Now the feather. You can leave all this mess on here, all the fluff. Um, these ones here are too long. So we want... I would like to... I usually use it right about where it starts to taper. I'm going to very gent, gently and gingerly peel these guys away. Revealing that stem. I'm going to snip there. I don't want to take the risk of breaking the stem. Now I'm going to peel back some fibers here. And I'm going to measure it up on the hook. That's about as wide as we want it. And I'm going to switch hands here. Tie these guys in by the tip. I like to trim it before I tie it in. Hook oh, got me there. Hold it to my side and let the thread wraps turn it over. Help it out a little as I wrap back. I don't go too far back. Bring your thread up, covering that in. Now we're going to do the same thing with the peacock pearl again. Get ourselves about three or four fibers, pearls. Snip those tips off, pull on them, make sure they're not going to break on me. If they break, just keep pulling until you got it nice and firm. Nice strong tips. Wrap those back to the point where you meet up with your other peacock roll. Throw your dubbing loop. Throw them on, tie them down. Make sure you leave yourself a good hook eye uh, distance from the eye. Very important. Same thing, we're going to lock that peacock in and we're going to twist it. Make ourselves a nice peacock rope. I've used the synthetic peacock uh, dubbings and stuff and it's just it's just not the same as, as real peacock. I'm going to wind it down, burning up that thinner bit of Pearl. I let them onto the sick. You might have to twist it again. I'm going to do a quick wrap through. Catch it in. Catch it in, tie it down nice and tight. Trim it off. Bring your thread back up. Now you want to bring the feather over. Don't worry if it got twisted around a little. It's no big deal. Now stroke those fibers back so that they're out of your way. I put my thumb on top. Get one turn. Holding the bobbin tight. And I'm going to give it a pull. Make sure everything's tight. Pinch it. Tight down to the eye. Bring the thread back up. See where your legs are sitting. Stroke those down. See how they're sitting. 
that's going to be good. Now we're going to bring our lift up. We got a thread tag there. My dub and loop hanging out. Get rid of that. No big deal. Bring that up. Bring it up. And then I push it in. And then I bring my thumb, my finger, and pull the pull the hackle fibers down and back where I want them to lay. And I bring that over nice and tight over the top. Then I come on the side and I pinch. Pull and pinch. And I turn it, tilt it towards me, towards myself. I'm going to bring the thread up and it's going to pull it back over onto that side. Take three nice tight turns. See how I'm sitting. Make sure you hold that thread nice and tight. Don't let it go loose. Then quick three wraps on the shank, down to the eye. Then I go right into the whip finish. And I whip up. You can't whip finish backwards. You go forward, backwards. It's all doing the same thing. We trim that off. And we're going to snip the head off here. Just make sure you don't cut into your back. Then I like to snip off the snip off the real blunt sides. Take a look. Take a look at what the trout are going to see. Or the sunfish, whatever you're going to throw this at. But then grab your legs. You can work them back into position. And that's the foam soft beetle. It'll sit right in the water. Whether it lands on its side or if it lands perfectly flat. Um, these legs will extend down into the film a little bit. And they'll, they'll get a nice wiggle on them, especially when a trout comes up or a fish comes up and they cause the wake of water to come up. It's going to give them a little bit of movement, and they're just going to slam it. It's a great, great beetle pattern. I use it quite often uh, in the summer months, just plopping it in the water and trying to get them to bite. And as you can see, they got a nice, nice clean area, nice hook gap on there. Very, miss very sel very seldom do I ever miss a fish with this this fly tied this way. But I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out at my blog www.utahsflycorner at blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.